Shalom. Uh, first thing and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor as due to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakwadash. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. Knowing in this gospel broad, lifting up the standard of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, this is just a quick lesson through the Spirit. Lord's well, will to be edifying, titled, What do you have to be afraid of? Or if you fear, then why are you in this faith? Okay, because we understand being under the grace and the protection of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay, fear is a worldly or a, a fleshly emotion that we oftentimes exhibit because of the unknown. Like they say, the people fear the unknown because they don't know what's expected. Like when you go, uh, like the dark, for example, the dark is widely feared because you got the unknown, you fear the unknown or the abyss. And on top of the um, mindset that they've incorporated into our beings of monsters and ghosts and all this other stuff, which can be very fearful. But overall, if you have the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you don't fear. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that brothers don't have fear because you have to have a, a balance of generated fear. You have healthy fear, you have unhealthy fear. The healthy fear is, is fearing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, keeping his commandments, not going off or not doing anything that's going to jeopardize your salvation. That's a healthy fear. But as far as man is concerned, being afraid of other individuals, that's not the spirit we're supposed to be in. But being in America, Babylon the Great, they have pumped fear constantly. You've been led by fear since you were born. Okay, because the minute you come out of your mother's womb, from the minute you go see your first appointments, to the minute you go to school, to the minute you take your first step, television, there was always some type of, uh, uh, how can I say it, some type of resistance towards you. Well, don't walk too fast because you may fall. You don't want to ride the bike without training wheels because you may fall and break your neck type ordeal, which is common sense because, you know, you have to take the safety precautions. But at the same time, man, sometimes things can cause you to be overcautious. And when you're overcautious, you can make mistakes. OK, but fear is, is, is a basic human emotion because anxiety, it comes along with it. You know, like a lot of times before you get into a scuffle or a fight or if you in any type of martial arts or you get into any altercation, you're going to feel fear or what they call anxiety because that's your body's natural fight or flight response. But overtaking it, you know, when it, when you let it consume you is when it becomes a danger, because if you're led through fear and over fear or over emotion, then you can do something crazy or you can get yourself or somebody else killed. OK, so the definition of fear says it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause a pain or a threat. OK, just like I said, you know, altercation wise. Or you see Esau come behind you. Naturally, you fear that or you get anxious because the history, you know, behind uh, 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 the, the atrocities of Jake. OK, and on top of that, you know, growing up in a mother's household, she pumps fear in her boys. So her men grew up timid, you know, afraid of their own shadow, so to speak. It says to be afraid of someone or something as likely to be dangerous or painful or threatening. Farmers fear that they would lose their business. And one of the biggest fears of Americans outside of dying is the concept of losing everything that they got. OK, but us in this faith, we understand that we're going to come to a time that we're going to have to walk away from said desires, people that we want, want, that we share relationships with, that we was around. OK, objects, jobs, money. Right? These are things that we're going to eventually have to walk away from as this society gets to its near end. You know, and you got Israelites out there. That's coming in the spirit of being afraid because they invested so much into the world. OK, so they're afraid to lose their worldly possessions, you know, their homes, their cars, their congregation, you know, but that's not supposed to be the case. Not even the evil day, which is known as Jacob's trouble. We're not even supposed to fear that. OK, and you may ask yourself, like, wait, what, what do you mean? How, how the hell would I not fear a complete economic collapse when people are going batshit crazy? Killing one another, robbing one another, military, chemical warfare, world war. Because indeed, these things are very fearful. Those are very frightening things to those that don't believe. 
Now, like I said, it will be normal to have some type of anxiety or some type of fear because the flesh is involved. So you're going to fear some type of emotion behind it when it kicks off. But overall, not letting it consume you and fully tapping into the spirit. Because in that day, at the end of the day, the, the, the overdrive of the Holy Spirit should out mitigate fear. OK, and anxiety and emotion. And you should just, just hop in the spirit. You know, and that takes practice. And it's going to come with the course of time and it's going to come through particular events, you know, because we're getting ready to go through some times that our faith is getting ready to be tested to the limit. You know, so fear is the last option we have to have. Not saying that you're just going to be this overly extravagant motherfucker, but you got to be confident within your fear. And when I mean you got to have confidence, even when you're afraid, and when I'm saying it's having confidence in your how about you, how about shy, man. All right. So I got a couple of precepts I just jotted down, you know, nothing too deep, but it says precepts when not having fear because the scriptures do tell you to have fear of the Lord. OK, but you're not supposed to fear Esau. You're not supposed to fear his micro C hip. You're not supposed to fear the economic collapse. You're not supposed to fear these crazy niggas out here that's getting ready to lose their minds when they lose things. You're not supposed to fear the guillotine, you know, but naturally you will have anxiety of these things because. You know, like I said, you know, we've come up in a society that teaches anxiety, you know. So this is the book of Psalms 27 and 3. It says, though a host should encamp against me. Matter of fact, I'm going to go apart. I'm going to start. I'm going to start it up. Uh, start at verses one. All right. So this is the book of uh, it says a sum of fearless trust in the most high. And this whole chapter is really good. OK, but. It reads, it says here, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom should I fear? OK, and when you believe that you're how about Shimei Haushai is your, your primary uh, force or your foundation, then at the end of the day, the fear leaves you, man. You're just like, look, it is what it is. Because just because you don't have fear doesn't mean that you ain't going to be put in situations. You're just going to be in a proper mindset to deal with it. You know, prime example, man. Shit, hey, you may be surrounded by a bunch of martial law troops and they all may have guns pointed at you. And naturally, your flesh is going to tremble because you're like, oh, shit, they get ready to send me to the spirit world. But when you understand what you're part of and you have confidence in the Lord, then eventually you just be like, look, man, fuck it. It is what it is. OK, and like I said, it takes a while to get to that point. You got to have a, a certain level of faith to be at that point. You know, and a lot of brothers, man, you know, we all going to get tested. Some in FEMA camps, some at gunpoint, some brothers uh, were losing everything. You know, your women walking out on you. We're going to be tried in different ways, you know, but the Lord knows you and he knows what's the best. He, he knows you and he knows what's fitting for you, man. And if you one of his, he's just not going to set you up for failure, you know. But overall, being put through situations like this is pretty much it's a test. It's, it's, it's what gets you to the next level, you know. For instance, coming down with a sudden illness, you may not think you're going to make it. In your mindset, you kind of fearful. You're like, fuck, man, I don't want to let this shit behind. But you got to get to the point like, look, I don't really care anymore. It is what it is, you know. But it says here, the Lord is my light and my salvation. It says, whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life of whom I should be afraid. So at the end of the day, if you know your how about you, how I got you, it's like, all right, cool. You know, it ain't shit to fear. It ain't nothing to scare. Be afraid of. Now, we're not saying walk through life being stupid or being belligerent, you know, being reckless, running up on a pack of wicked jakes and demanding respect from them. No, man, that's not how that works. Because them niggas can very well retaliate against you. But overall, believing in your how about shimmy how was shy. OK, like you could be in a, in a bar or restaurant setting and it could be a pack of hooligans in there. And you may say, you know what, I'm going to go to a different restaurant because I don't want the riffraff. And it's not because you're afraid of what's going to happen, but you want to avoid, you know, you want to be smart. You want to use wisdom because Jake ain't got no damn sense, man. You see, but it says here, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So when you know that the Lord has the provision set up for you, hey, no matter what, hey, the Lord is going to he's going to protect you. You'd be surprised on how many people that wanted to do us harm and you don't hear about them anymore. And I have a handful of testimonies in that regard. You know, right when I came into the truth, even when I was in the truth, even before I came in the truth, people that wanted to do physical bodily harm to us, 
the Lord ultimately got these people out the way. So how much more now when we're going to need you? How about Shimei Hawashai? Okay, when martial law surrounds the neighborhoods and you got marauders everywhere, you got riots breaking out. Okay, you got fires breaking out. You got nuclear war. The Lord is going to clear the path for us, man. You just got to stay faithful and believe. It says, though a host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. You know, and you got to exercise that confidence by prayer. If you need to fast, doing the work and really believing and meditating on these things. I know one precept or a particular story that kind of, you know, when I'm when I when I have anxiety, because believe it or not, man, if you were Jake growing up in America, I don't care who you are. We suffer from unfathomable levels of anxiety, man. And anxiety is a demon. OK, anxiety comes upon you through trauma, being in a traumatic situation, you know, going through things in life. OK, having abusive parents uh, uh, and just going through particular things. And on top of that, just living in America. OK, the food just caused to put anxiety on you. You know, your central nervous system is all out of whack. You can't think straight, you know, consuming, consuming things that's that's not of the spirit all creates anxiety. And we all have a level of anxiety here. Even if you don't realize it. But it says here in this would I be confident, man. But it says one thing I have desire, O Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire of his temple, man, you know, in this truth. And as I mentioned, one particular story that gets me uh, you know, that kind of calms my spirit now when I'm having doubts, is when I go into the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, when the three men were put in a furnace. Because they didn't bow down to the king's orders. I have to put myself in that mindset because that can very well be us. You know, being put through the fire, being put through the ringer, being locked up, you know, being chased. Motherfuckers want to kill you. Okay, these are going to be very reality in the near future, man. So you got to get your mind wrapped around these things, but not shrouded in fear, but fearing the Lord. Because if you fear the Lord, then what can man do to you? All right. Uh precept here this is the book of psalms 46 and 2 and it reads here it says therefore we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the seas right okay and how is this world going to be moved through world war okay we're saying that america is getting ready to enter a new front with china okay they're already fighting the houthis in iran hamas they're already fighting wars on several fronts now they're getting ready to engage in another war OK, which is going to end into the to, it's going to end with the downfall of Babylon and great. And the scriptures say that the earth should reel to and fro like a drunkard. You see, so it says, therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the governments. So when the Lord overthrows this place, it's going to be very fearful. But we got to we got to keep our integrity, got to keep our wits about us. And we got to keep your heart by how shy first. OK, because when you fearful. And you have a, 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 a too much anxiety. You can't think straight. You begin to make dumb moves, man. You become clouded in your judgment. And before you know it, that could be the end of you. All right. Psalms 56 and 4 says, And Yahweh would I praise his word. And in the power of the most high, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Okay. Now, a big thing that brothers have struggled with over the years was being put in these prisons, these FEMA prisons. OK, because that what if demon hops on you? But what if they do this? What if they chop off my head? What if they cut off my hand? What if they kill my kids in front of me? It's like all these what ifs. But you're not knowing that you're making it worse in your mindset than what it may be. OK, you may not never go to a FEMA camp. You may not never get called by the truth. Nobody may not even come after you. The Lord may just hide you. OK, now they say, uh, uh, think they say what? Uh, expect the worst, hope for the best and pray for the best. Which is a good mindset because when you expect the worst, then that means that you are already preparing your mind to deal with the worst. But overall, you might not even get remotely that. OK, remember, Jacob's trouble is for the two thirds, for the wicked. Now, if you were wicked and if you are of the two thirds, then, yeah, I would say you have a lot to worry about. But you in the faith, hey, the Lord said that, hey, he's going to protect us, man. OK, we've died before. We've been fucking beheaded we've been tortured we've been ate alive we've been thrown in prison and, and stoned to death man so on this side i can say that it's unlikely 
that all the elect is going to be a touch. OK, it's unlikely because the scriptures don't say that. Now, you will have martyrs. You will have men that get caught up in this thing. But as a collective, hey, the elect going to be good. OK, and we're reading it. Read Daniel 12 and 1. And even if you have to go through certain things, hey, this, the spirit of the Lord is going to be with you. Because he's going to get you to the point that you're going to be fed up with it anyway. It's like, all right, fuck it. Do what y'all got to do. All right. But anyway, uh, it says here, be not afraid of sudden fear. Neither fear when ne neither neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. OK, the hour of martial law. OK, right now we in a polar vortex. Esau is playing with the weather. OK, he's freezing people out and he can just cut the power tonight and say, you know what? I'm going to bring another one. I'm going to just cut the grid. You know, he can do that. And then start to roll on people. But then again, you can't fear that because you already expect it to happen. Okay, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it coming. And how is the wicked going to get taken out? Through nuclear whip, through, through ICBM nuclear fire, man. And ultimately, we're going to enslave Esau. Okay, so you can't be afraid of these things. As his kingdom falls, we come up, brothers. Okay, don't get worse from us from this point. It gets better for us. OK, I think we've been stuck in a mindset that we think shit is just going to go batshit crazy for us once we get in Jacob's trouble. Man, you got a whole system that Esau got on his hands. OK, he ain't just worry about your individual ass. OK, now he's going to roll on a movement as a collective. But as far as you, you're just one person. You may go under the radar, man. Okay, he ain't just going to be looking for you only like you just so important. No, don't work that way because he got a front full of millions of other people that he's up against. So the Lord has already can provide the escape route. And why they may be gunning for you, shit, he got to get through a billion motherfuckers to get to you, man. If that's the Lord's will. Okay, this is why we say, hey, man, just have faith, have confidence, man. You're going to be surprised on how in Jacob's trouble, we're going to be well off. Yeah, we're going to be in straits, says the righteous to suffer straits. But suffering straits now. And we're going to suffer more straits by not having things. By not having... Uh, 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 electricity by not having the food we desire. Okay, we ain't gonna be uh, be able to drive the vehicles. You may not have brothers with you. You may not have your woman with you. Okay, you may get locked up in prison, suffering straits. But overall, man, you know the Lord is gonna take care of us. So it ain't really shit to be afraid. But it's easier said than done. All right, Second Timothy one and seven it says, "For you, how I have not given us the spirit of fear." But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, now when you look up this word sound, it's that Second Timothy one and seven. It's a lot if this thing is loud. Second Timothy one and seven. Uh, let's look up the word sound. Get some, get a little understanding on it. Strong's G forty nine ninety five, Sophronismas. Sophronismas. All right. So it says, an admonishing or calling to soundness of mind to moderation of self control. Self control, man. Exercising some self control. Okay, when you're in a situation and it is looking very grim, you got to think, man. You know, you got to think and, and take your time and breathe. You know, they have breathing techniques that they uh, use for people that have a lot of anxiety or a lot of stress or depression. Or if you're an addict or something like that, they say do breathing techniques. That way you can recollect your thoughts, man. Because when you can't recollect your thoughts, then you're scatterbrained. You do dumb shit. You know, and it's happened to us all. You know, you panic. You know what I'm saying? Because you fear the unknown or you can't think quick. But you got to learn how to think under pressure. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole point. The Lord is going to teach us. He's teaching us these things. You know? And let the spirit work. Sometimes you just got to let the spirit work for you. More often than not. All right, second edge of 16 and 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, says the Lord. But behold, the days our trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Okay, and we in the days of trouble. And we're gonna they're gonna intensify. Things are gonna kick off, man. Okay, one day we're gonna wake up, this whole system is gonna be up in shambles. Motherfuckers gonna be riding, motherfuckers gonna be breaking in, looting, gonna hear gunshots. Yeah, these are things to very well be anxious of because it's like, oh shit, you don't want to get caught up in that. But if the Lord is with you, then you ain't going to get caught up in that anyway. You know, you'd be surprised on how the Lord going to move brothers around in this thing. Just have to wait and see. But he's going to dip us out the way so cold. And then, hey, we're going to get those spiritual abilities, man. Oh, brothers going to get power. Brothers going to be able to do things, man, with their minds. You know, Lord's going to lift up a standard. 
Certain brothers, he's going to hide. Certain brothers are going to be uh, battle waxes and weapons of war. Hey, man, it's coming down to the pipe. So I pray to the Lord that he make me a battle wax, man, honestly speaking, because, hey, I'm ready to put the pipe up to you, to you clowns out here, man. I'm, hey, look, the Lord, hey, the Lord, hey, he's willing, but he, he's willing, he wants to get some get back. You know what I'm saying? I pray that you, how about you, how use me as a, as a sort of vengeance for him, man, right along with you brothers out there. Okay, fuck all that scared shit. And this is a spirit you have to pray off you, man. You may have to fast off you because ultimately it's a demon. And while I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's not healthy to have fear, I mean, feel, fear, it keeps you alert. Anxiety keeps you alert and knowing how to navigate, but overall, you can't let it consume you. You know, because, hey, we'll be lying to say we're not afraid of this shit happening. Of course, we're going to be batshit scared, but we ain't going to let that fear outdo our faith. Okay, you have faith, then you have fear. Take your pick. I choose faith. I choose to believe in something that I don't even see. It's gotten us thus far, right? But it says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide. So, hey, say less, man. But Lord's will, this is just a quick edifying lesson, giving all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh by Shimei, Yahweh Shai, by Shimei, Lord's will, you are edified into the next lesson. Shalom.